Hey Digital World, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Spliced In Later. Yes, I have been gone for a little bit. I apologize for that. Uh, just some stuff personal wise on my end that required my attention. Uh, meaning that, you know, no new episode last week. Uh, but that's okay. One week off every three or four months is pretty okay, I think. So what was it? The last time I spoke to you all was Killers of the Flower Moon. My goodness. I feel like that movie came out ages ago, but I can't believe it was only two weeks. Does anyone else a little concerned at how quickly this year has gone? It's absolutely insane. Anyway, we are back here at Splice Soon Later to bring you some more content over the next few weeks as we close out 2023, majority of which will probably be movie reviews, but I'll slip in some other stuff here or there to tide us over until we get to that Always exciting moment where we rank our top films of the year. And um, going back through my list uh, tonight, as I've just seen a recent movie, uh, updating, moving things around. There's some good stuff that came out this year. There's going to be some genuine competition for those spots. Maybe not competition that everyone out there will agree with, but definitely, definitely some good shit. So be sure to be sure to come back and, and do all that. And keep coming back for everything else I do between now and then. Uh, this movie was one... I was anxious to see, but also apprehensive. And it's because it's part of something that we've documented on this show quite a lot. Um, as we once again dive back in to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. A topic that is certainly debated amongst the internets and even Variety Magazine of all places about how this mega behemoth franchise that used to be a guaranteed cash cow money making extreme uh, has lost its way in recent years. Ever since the climactic ending of the Infinity Saga with Avengers Endgame, the incessant need for content, the need to link everything so everything matters, uh, the need to have seen one thing to understand something else, and probably most damaging, the expansion to Disney Plus and creating constant TV shows. I believe someone pointed out to me that in 2021... There was probably a new Marvel episode of something nearly every week of that year. However, those shows were made by people who probably aren't the best to be making shows. They weren't, didn't have showrunners. Uh, they were more designed as movies that were broken up into parts, meaning your momentum to enjoy the product stalled if you were watching it week after week. I've said it a few times. When I've gone back and rewatched those Disney Plus Marvel shows, in a one sitting where I can watch all six episodes in one go, I have a much better time with it. But that shouldn't be on me to just be like, oh, just wait six weeks and then watch it and you get a good experience. If you're going to release it on a weekly basis, the idea is that's how it should be consumed. You know, bring back the days where Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You had 22 episodes a year, uh, season, but there were episodes. Uh, so either way, besides all that, I still love it. I still enjoy it immensely it's just unfortunate these day and age now uh that one it's not guaranteed that i like an mcu product and two we're moving into a point where in the past it was expected everybody would want to go and see a marvel movie together now it's like you have to justify why you're going to see this specific one uh here on the show i've talked about it a lot i've always loved how this franchise began with the early days of iron man how it brought all these different superheroes together allowed them to exist in their own franchise of movies but also bring them together for team-ups avengers crossing over with each other in a way that was seamless that allowed you to appreciate the world as a whole or if you wanted to just pick your specific favorite characters and just go on their adventures with them uh it's a franchise that had its TV troubles in the beginning. It's not something that's been perfect from the very beginning up until a certain point. There have been mistakes. There have been odd choices. There have been backpedaling. There's been cameos, the post credit scenes that go nowhere. It's plenty of stuff there. But for the majority, I still have fun with them. Uh, every now and then there might be something that really upsets me. Secret Invasion is one quite recent example. But for the most part, it takes a lot for me to not at least enjoy it in some capacity. Uh, so on this show, we've either gone back in the past and we've gone back through the ages. We've covered everything from Iron Man up until recently I did Ant-Man in 2015. Or we review the new stuff that comes out, which we kicked off in 2021 with the start of WandaVision. Every time a new Disney Plus show completes, 
its run or every time a new movie is released in the theaters, I give you my review of that pretty much immediately, which means they're hot takes. My opinions on them could change drastically on a rewatch. They're not as more finite in my opinions of them as the older stuff, but I like to think my opinions don't change too much. I always have a certain idea after I've seen it if I feel like it's going to change on a rewatch or not. Uh, so this one here that we're reviewing today to stop dawdling, we're talking about The Marvels, which is, who knows what number MCU movie this is, but it's a sequel to Captain Marvel, which is, uh, was in 2019, believe it or not, five years ago, starring Brie Larson as Carol Danvers. Uh, so it's her continuing adventures, but it's called The Marvels because it's also a team-up movie that brings in the character of Monica Rambeau, who was a character introduced in Captain Marvel as a young girl. Uh, she had her origin story of her superhero powers in the TV show WandaVision. Uh, and also Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, uh, who got her own show last year. Just a, a, an interesting young adult, exciting show with a really great protagonist that I thought was great. Another thing I want to touch on briefly before I get into it, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it, is obviously this movie is projected to fail on many different reasons. The Marvel fatigue, the current writer's strike, meaning that it can't be promoted the way they would like it to. Um, some negative reception to Miss Marvel or Captain Marvel or WandaVision. Um, the negative reception to Secret Invasion recently that uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, they've printed more disappointing entries of the MCU this year than exceptional stuff. I believe Guardians 3 is the only one that was like truly fantastic. Uh, but there's also that small group of people. I'd like to think they're small, but they're the ones that are on the internet the most. They're the loudest ones that are telling you like, oh, uh, I, I support women. I, I, I'm happy to go see a movie where a woman is the main character, but not if it's forced, you know? And this is just forced. Every superhero with a female character is forced and they're annoying and I hate them, blah, blah, blah. And it's plagued Captain Marvel uh, and it definitely plagued Miss Marvel last year i thought miss marvel was a fantastic show and all you heard online was just here's how you don't make a show all those experts on youtube who break down and analyze why they hate miss marvel i mean one i don't know how much of an expert you are but whatever two um for someone who hates this stuff you keep watching it just so you can have content for your youtube channel uh and three you just suck <laughs> i guess is the point there um I don't know. So there is going to be a lot of that, especially this being a team up of three uh, superhero female characters all working together. Very, very prominently, girls get it done from the boys. So naturally, there's been some review bombing before it's even come out. I looked at some reviews on Letterboxd and people like giving it five stars, but in like an ironic sense, saying like, oh, Martin Scorsese is spinning in his grave. Or this is as bad as Shazam 2 and I haven't seen either one of them. So stupid stuff like that. So I think the reviews out there, there's plenty of people review this all the time. You're going to find the good ones, which will either give you their honest opinion. And people can hate this movie. I have absolutely no problem with that. Marvel has really banged people over the head recently where I totally understand if you're just over it. It's the same stuff over and over again. You're after something different. You want something else in the cinemas. I get that entirely. Uh, but you are going to find some stuff which is just negative for sexist or shitty reasons. Uh, so I guess the point of that is it's really hard to do this with the current Marvel content, but I would recommend you see this movie for yourself and make up your own mind. And you may hate it. You may love it. But I think there's too much noise and chatter, especially around this one, in both sides. I think there's probably too much positivity there's, there's, as well. You can also go the other way. You can be so positive about something without even seeing it because you just want to uh, make a statement or something like that. I don't know. But it's hard with a new Marvel thing to be like, oh, you should see it and make up your mind because you're probably over it and that's okay. However, that is going to be my takeaway from this review. I enjoyed it. I didn't love it but it's certainly not a bad film in any sense of the word. And I think it's really going to depend on your taste, on what you want out of a movie, what you can sit back and go, that's okay. And what grinds your gears, what 
annoys you in certain ways but you cannot really know that for yourself unless you see it and there's so much going on in this movie there are high highs and there are low lows that can't really be summed up in just he's good or it's bad i think you know this is one where i think people are going to have to give it a chance for themselves i don't know if that'll happen while it's in the movie theaters odds are it'll probably have a a resurgence when it's out on disney plus most likely uh so yeah my review of the marvels i liked it i think in a, in a year where we had the highest highs of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and the lowest lows of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania and Secret Invasion, the Marvels is right down the middle. It's fun, it's competent, it's solid, it's a good time, uh, but it has some issues which drag it down as well and some little bits which elevate it up. It's by no means going to go down as one of the most iconic Marvel. It's no Winter Soldier, it's no... Guardians of the Galaxy 3, it's no Civil War, it's no Avengers Infinity War, but it's certainly no Quantum Mania, it's no um, Secret Invasion, it's no Thor the Dark World, it's no anything else that's terrible. It's hard for me to pick the terrible ones for MCU because I'm so biased, I suppose, but it's competent. It's, it's a step in the right direction, at least for Marvel not making these big bloated things where everything has to matter, everything has to be connected to other things, which is ironic in that it pulls from characters who have had their own stories in other shows. Uh, but as an experiment, I went with two other friends. One was like me who had seen all the Marvel content needed for this with the exception of Secret Invasion. And the other hadn't seen anything except the original Captain Marvel. And they did say they'd watch WandaVision when it first came out, but that was a good three and a half years ago and they've never gone back and thought about it since then to a point where he can't even really remember what happened in WandaVision and both of them were able to experience understand and enjoy this movie probably enjoyed it more than I did uh, quite extensively so to alleviate that fear I suppose where there has been a lot of issues of Marvel trying to connect things a little bit too much Marvel was so good in the past when you could watch any particular product and it could be connected if you had a wider knowledge of the world you could understand a few different things that they're alluding to or referencing or cameo characters but if you'd never seen anything you could still pick out a movie and watch it and enjoy it and understand what's going on and with the multiverse saga as it's called with so much content so much disney plus shows and so much movies and everything being like oh this is a key stepping point in our big multiverse saga meaning it's more like a chunk of larger story rather than its own story. It's worrying uh, that regular Joes, especially people who are sick of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, cannot enjoy it and appreciate it a certain way. And when you're making a movie about essentially a sequel to Captain Marvel, but really a team-up that combines one movie and two shows, three if you include Secret Invasion, which really you don't have to. Secret Invasion has absolutely no impact on this movie, so don't worry. Um, to be able to do all that and then have people go like my friends who hadn't seen all or some of the prelude to this movie and understand immediately who everybody is, what their drives are, what the purpose is, that's good. That's what Marvel needs to focus on and do going forward if it wants to keep this world from collapsing in on itself. In fact, I would go so far to say that because I've watched every single Marvel thing that's ever come out before this movie, that probably actually hampered my enjoyment of it because I know connections to other things that if, that should affect this movie that don't, that my friends didn't. So where I can go, wait, that's a bad move because of what happened in a previous thing, or this happened because of something else, so why is that happening now? That ruins my ability to enjoy it. Uh, that's also on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You create a connected world, things should flow. Uh, my big example, I can't do too much spoilers, but Secret Invasion. This is Secret Invasion is Nick Fury's story. Nick Fury is in this movie. And the Nick Fury and those two things are night and day. They are completely different characters. Uh, the What Secret Invasion does with Skrulls sets up for the Skrulls' future. is completely at odds with what the Skrulls are doing in this movie. And one could argue condemns the Skrulls to an even worse fate if they go through what it implies they're doing in the movie. Uh, and because Secret Invasion didn't know what was happening in the Marvels, they always had to make sure that Nick Fury was in a certain point to be in that movie and not be radically changed because 
the Marvels can't write Nick Fury knowing what's happened in that previous thing because a lot of these things are working without talking to each other. Uh, meaning there's not a sense that this world is building and evolving. It's more a sense of in consume product, separate it in its own thing, now go to this other thing. Whatever happened before, it doesn't matter. So what's the moral of that? I guess don't watch everything Marvel does, but don't, if you're going to, don't hold them to a continuity that they clearly can't hold it to themselves. <laughs> That's not really a positive, but it's it's a lot of baggage that comes with this movie and with the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a whole, which is unfair to the Marvels. So for the Marvels as its own movie, as I said, it's a sequel to Captain Marvel. It picks up with Captain Marvel, hanging out in space with her adorable cat Florican goose, just protecting the cosmos. Meanwhile, you also have Kamala Khan after her Miss Marvel adventures. She's just a street level superhero in Jersey who has an obsession with Captain Marvel and a very loving, if slightly overprotecting family. And then you have Monica Rambo, who's been recruited by Fury to work essentially for S.H.I.E.L.D. in space. They're just doing science stuff in space. A Kree uh, fanatic called Da Ben uh, gets a hold of a bangle, uh, one Pacific bangle. Kamala Khan has the other bangle and does some tinkering with it, which leads to Captain Marvel, Monica, and Miss Marvel all being quantumly entangled, meaning that whenever they use each other's, they use their powers in combat or whatever, they can sporadically and without warning swap places. So Carol will be flying through space and then suddenly she's in Kamala's apartment and a house, I should say, and Kamala is flying through space or Monica is fighting some scrolls, but then she's talking to Nick Fury and oh, now Captain Marvel is fighting the scrolls or whatever, stuff like that. Um, so eventually they have to figure out how to use this to their advantage, how to sync up, how to reunite with each other. And then when they learn what's going on and why it's happening, basically a lot of it is a result of Captain Marvel's declaration at the end of her first movie that she was going to go to the Kree homeworld, destroy the supreme intelligence that was the big bad of the first Captain Marvel. The implications of her doing that and how that's impacted the Kree civilization and their motives and goals and this bad guy's motives and goals going forward after that. So they have to combat that learn to work together a team deal with some baggage whether it's monica feeling like carol has abandoned her because she hasn't seen her since she was a little kid or kamala's complete obsessiveness with captain marvel as this iconic superhero and not understanding who she is as a person to her family worried for her safety to fury getting involved uh a lot going on to a point where at the end eventually the three of them have to team up and fight back and save the earth eventually it all comes back to affect earth and fury and kamala's family so they all gotta to do that it's solid it's a really good time i liked it more than i expected i would there are bits i didn't like but we'll get to that uh in a minute because the positives i think outweigh the negatives the positives 100 percent are are main characters here carol monica and kamala are really great protagonists they work really well together i wasn't the hugest fan of captain marvel when she was first introduced i feel like she was shoehorned into the end of the infinity saga and i didn't really know how i felt about brie larson's portrayal of her i thought she was like smug and she had that superman complex where it just seemed like nothing can hurt her so why should i care if she's never in danger but she seemed a lot more vulnerable in this movie. The fact that she allows herself to open up and have essentially her own surrogate family with these superhero Marvel characters made me connect more with her as a character, which I thought was good. Monica is why I really like Tiana Paris's Monica. Of the three, I feel like she has the least going forward into the movie. There's that connection with Carol, but it's all alluded to, I think, mainly because she doesn't have a lot of the support that the other characters has. Carol has the Kree, uh, everything that went on in the first movie. Kamala has her family tagging along on the adventure. Monica's also sort of there, but I think she's shafted a little bit. She does have some really important moments in the movie, especially towards the end. But she plays really well with the characters too, as does Kamala. Iman Vellani as Kamala Khan is a standout for the movie. Um, if you're one of those twats who didn't like her in Miss Marvel, you're not going to like her in this but she's fantastic. She holds her own against the other actors. Uh, she's got great comedic timing. She's fun. She's kind of like if a Marvel fan 
an MCU fan suddenly got to be in a movie, just how you would react in that situation is encapsulated perfectly by her doing that. I really like them syncing up their powers. In the beginning, at the start, it's hectic, it's exciting, they're constantly swipping, flopping, they don't know what's going on, the visuals there are great. And then you get that classic montage scene where they have to learn how to work together uh, and then they're working as a unit towards the end. I think it was good. Apart from the Avengers and uh, Guardians, we haven't really had a team-up sort of movie. You've had like Hulk and Thor joining forces for an adventure or something, but this is a like a superhero team with three very different characters having to come together, and I really like that as well. I also thought Kamala's family were fantastic in it. I've always liked them from the show. I think they held their own in staying relevant to the story, just as like emotional support for Kamala, whether negative or positive. Samuel Jackson as Fury. This was funny Fury. This was Fury just having fun, having a laugh, making jokes. Completely at opposite with what he was in Secret Invasion, but it doesn't matter. We're ignoring that. They allowed Samuel Jackson to have fun, and his comedic timing has always been great, so that's pretty good too. Uh, the pacing, the direction, I think, is unique. It doesn't feel and look like a generic Marvel movie like Ant-Man and the Lost Quantum Man. It just felt like someone's like, okay, we're making a movie. This feels like uh, the director has a vision of how to tell this story, how it unfolds in front of your eyes, how to bring everybody together and showcase different points in the story. Um, and it's not bloated. It's not over two hours. It comes in at just over an hour and a half. So it's one of the shorter ones, which is good. I think if this movie were longer, it would be hard to sit through. Um, I think if it were bloated, if it was constantly relying on going, he's set up for this or that or bringing in whole bunch of different characters for quick of scenes and appearances or whatever i think it would struggle so the pacing is almost perfect i'll say almost and i think uh for the most part it made me more keen for future marvel stuff i had been grumpy as hell since secret invasion and indifferent since quantum mania but i'm at that point not to the same level as guardians 3 because that was just incredible but after watching this i was like this is not perfect, but it's a step in the right direction for what Marvel needs to do going forward. That said, there are some issues which might make it difficult for some people to enjoy this movie. One being, uh, tonally, the movie's all over the place. It has a really solid start. It really hits the ground running. It doesn't waste time going like, oh, we'll just have some jokes here or there. We'll move some characters into position. No, it just straight up goes, all right, we're off to the races. They're already swapping. Let's go. And it chops along so fast everybody's reacting screaming fighting the uh the situation the threat is made very clear early on so that's pretty great then about halfway through the movie they go to a planet which is almost made of water except for this kingdom uh and on that planet they communicate in song they don't they can't understand you if you speak so you have to sing and it's kind of like a bollywood style place as well like the exaggerated dancing um, it's uh, tonal whiplash to get to that point because you've been having fun up to that point but this is silly but then unfortunately they don't lean into it enough if you're going to have a planet where everybody sings go for it have them belt out some ballads have them do some greatest showman stuff in there but they're always like on the cusp of going yes we're about to sing, nah, pull back sing pull back no to a point where you're just going Okay, it's a singing planet, but if you're not going to really take advantage of the singing part, then it just is in stark contrast of what's going on, and it's really brought the momentum to a halt. And from that point on, the tone's kind of all over the place. Sometimes it can get really, really, really silly to the point where you're just like, what are you doing? And then sometimes it can try to be really serious, and people are crying and talking about mass genocides and stuff like that. And you're going, what? Okay, what's happening? Uh... And it really ricochets like that right to the end. It rushes that third final act, I think. It doesn't really allow that moment to breathe. So when there's big dramatic sacrifices and the villains getting there to, to really pound these marbles into oblivion, you're just sort of like, whoa, what's happening? 10 seconds ago, we were just on the singing planet. So that is, if you're a lot of people, if you want your movie to stay at a certain tone, you will struggle with this one, I think. If you allow yourself to appreciate what they're trying to do, I think you can go by. But for me personally, I was sort of like, okay, this is getting a little bit off track. Bring it back. Bring it back on the rails. We're doing so good. Where are we going? Just pull it back. Uh, the villain, 
unfortunately for me, does fall into the trap of forgettable villain. She's not the worst by any means. Uh, there's a lot of wasted potential in her, I think. There could, there's a point where you're like, oh, this villain is kind of... You understand why they're being villainous. Uh, there's some baggage there, which is not necessarily her fault. Uh, yeah, I kind of want you to succeed in what you want to do, just not how you're doing it. But there's not a lot of like, uh, why is she the one leading the charge? Why is she taking up the mantle for the Kree Society? Why is she so desperate to, to do this or that? It's just sort of like, it's almost there, but not quite. Uh, and finally, the movie completely sucks uh, in certain bits where it tries to do the MCU trap of uh, bringing in cameos and, and, and referencing things in other movies. There's a cameo in here. I'm sure you already know it because in a last desperate move from the MCU, they released a trailer for this movie the day before it came out and they absolutely spoiled who this cameo was. I'm lucky I avoided it. But um, even if you sort of knew, uh, it's a complete roadblock in the movie. It doesn't make sense. It's strange. It feels like they grabbed the cameo character and just were like, hey, do you want to come in here and say a couple of lines? And she literally was like, what? What? Uh, okay, sure. I've just had a few margaritas, so I'm drunk. But okay, sure. Uh, and that is when you're like, uh, okay, I was really enjoying this, this solid standalone Marvel's adventure. But no, now we have to have this character be here and just be like, hey, remember them? Yeah. There is a lot of cameo at the end of the movie, which I like a bit more, but that felt like it should have been a post credit scene, not the actual ending of the movie. A little, a little information for you as well when you go and see this movie. There is a mid credit scene. There's not a post credit scene. There's a, a noise grab of like Goose uh, coughing up a herbal, but there's no scene. So don't sit through the credits waiting for it because you're not going to get it and you might be disappointed. There is a solid post-credits, um, mid-credits scene, I should say. Uh, that was okay. I quite liked it. Um, I don't really want anything to come of it, but who knows? I don't know what the plan is going forward, so we'll see. Overall, The Marvels is a solid, uh, good film from the MCU. Not great, but not terrible. I think it really does justice to our three main characters. I think it's fun to watch. I think it's very exciting it really makes you feel for these characters especially if you're like me and you had trouble with with one of them i wasn't didn't really care about captain marvel now i'm kind of like i want to see more of her uh tonally it's a bit of a mess the villain's a bit underdeveloped uh and cameos will smack you in the face and go oh yeah that's what the mcu does but overall it's one of their better movies in the last few years uh and makes me hopeful for hopefully what they're going to do next after this. I've seen that they're pulling back, that they're refiguring how connected everything is, how much Disney Plus content they do, uh, what the stories are actually going into these movies. So who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. I'll never stop watching these movies as long as you keep lip releasing them. I'll keep seeing them. Even if they turn into dog shit, I'll still be there opening night. There, I thank you very much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, I will be back next week for another movie review, this time for The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I've never read the book. I know nothing about it. I kind of enjoyed The Hunger Games uh, movies as a franchise. But, uh, certain bits, some I didn't. I'll get more into that next week, but I'm pretty keen to see it. Uh, so I'll be back next week around this point, the middle of the week, to give you my review for that and i hope you tune in for that and if you want to hear me talk about more mcu content here on the old youtubes i got a little playlist everything i've talked about in order of chronologically released on the mcu side not my side there's a lot it probably is one apart from my movie reviews it's probably the thing that has the most content on here so if you're new to the channel if you're new to listening and you want to know this was okay but is he what is he like all the time it's probably a good place to start or I may never hear from you again. And that's okay. Thank you for listening this one time. So until next week, thank you all for listening. I love and appreciate you. It means a lot. And I'll catch you on the next Spliced in Later Stravaganza. <laughs> Adios, muchachos. I'll catch you next time. Mm-hmm.